players allowances, salaries which is accrued, and players downed their tools. They refused to go to Kamtoyo this morning to train ahead of the clash tomorrow. And he says, of course, going by our records on phone, he says that they are working to the nail to ensure that they pay the players latest by four. Patrick. This is a very, very bad time for Gormaya to say that the players are actually not going to train, considering that you have made it to one of Africa's premier competitions. Uh, it, it is part of uh, what we've been having in African football, and we've been fighting that for a long time, that uh, when you expect a team to perform in a tournament or at a stage where you require them to be there, you yes. find that some of these things are coming in. For the country, that one has been sorted with the FIFA requirements, but with the clubs, we still have that problem. Yes. But I think for Kogalo, at this stage, they need to sit down and see the way forward. Though they're talking of three months, four months uh, allowances, they were paid yes. yesterday, part of it, I think they can put that aside. Yeah deal with the uh, Barkane tomorrow, then thereafter they can come and perhaps sort it out. And just like what um, uh, my friend has said, uh, Maxwell, about them sorting it out by 4 p.m., mm -hmm. you know it's not good for publicity, it's not yeah. good for even the, the, their competitors, because uh, Barkane know that there is uh, animosity within the team. They know that tomorrow they are coming here to get a win. And you yes. know, the moment you get an away win yes. in African football, you are into the next stage. Mentally, mentally, what will this do to Gormaya, because at their state of mind, you look at the kind of Morocco, they, are, they, they will look at Gormaya and say like, this is a team that is not going to pay their players. We can go there and actually push them to the limits and get this win. For Gormaya, their state of mind will be good. For that game uh, tomorrow? I may say it's, it's, it, may, it might be good or it might not be. Mm -hmm. One is that uh, sometimes when you are facing teams that are having, uh, that are going through turmoil in terms of financial payments, yeah. they might get paid today and then it motivates them tomorrow mm -hmm. and win tomorrow's match. Yes. Or they might not be able to be motivated to win tomorrow's match. And again, let's look at the, the, the away uh, record of Barkane. Yes. Barkane are not performing well away. So that is a plus for Gold Maya. So if they can be able to, to crack it today, get the payments or even part of the, what they are, uh, they are required to be paid, the yes. players, then tomorrow they can be able to show and give us a good play. And considering this yes. is coming in the uh, backdrop of, you know, <laughs> several predicaments affecting the team as we speak right now, Gourmet are going into this particular clash tomorrow evening without, in the absence of their five influential players led by, you know, ah, Captain yes. Aaron Shakava, uh -huh. goalkeeper Bon Fasol Watch, Shafiq Batambuza, one of the influential left backs uh, alongside Ernest Wendo. Yes. All of them will be missing tomorrow's tie and that's why Coach Hassan Okte, the tactician for Gourmet Football Club, has been using them in their KPL fixtures, yes. and they have played like three games in the last seven days, playing against Sony Shuka uh, yes. during midweek, beating them by 3-2, playing against Viga United, playing against Kakamega Umboi. So it's also uh, an issue that will, um, might affect the team, fixture congestion and absence of the influential players ahead of the clash tomorrow. Well, that one might now be a very tough one for Gormaya because this is a very tough hill to climb for Gormaya. How do you rate it? There are players who have got them into the quarterfinals. Five of them will not be there. The other players will be coming, the likes of Sassi Doke, will be making onto this squad. Will they be good enough against the Moroccan side? Um, that again, I, I want to sit on the fence because yes. I'm looking at two things. Eh? Gormaya is one of the teams in Kenyan football or East Africa. It's one of the teams that's very organized, tactically organized, yes. and they can bring in any player that has been signed by the same club to perform at that level. The other thing is that uh, the fixture congestion is something that we, we've been talking about. Yes. But again, look at the African football. If you want to make it... Uh, this uh, Confederations Cup, if you want to make it to the Champions League mm -hmm. up to the knockout stage, yes. you need to have so many matches being played. And for me, I think this is a positive for Kogalo. Be having matches uh, three to four days. Yeah. That gives them the, 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 the momentum, also gives them the drive to go and perform better. And also in terms of training, yes. the only bad part is that today they not turn up for training, uh -huh. which is also a good requirement for the tomorrow's match. Mm -hmm. That might affect them. But in terms of the matches, two or three days, mm -hmm. I think that's good for that team. And considering that Gourmet Football Club has a pool of, you know, several players, yes. maybe 
tactician as an octet might decide to use that makeshift kind of formation. We've seen it, you know, working overseas in recognized and high profile leagues like at Manchester City, Pep Guardiola is using makeshift kind of, yes. you know, fielding players. So maybe in absence of uh, the players who are out suspended and those who are out injured, uh, the coach is likely to, you know, field other unfamiliar players who are not known to the opponents, Ares Berkane, and that might work in their favor. Well, it's a big one for Gormaya there, and tomorrow at 4 p.m. they will be playing. 4 p.m. 7, 7 p.m. Yeah, tomorrow it's at 7 fixture. p.m. at the Kasarane Stadium will be Gormaya versus R.S. Bekane. And let's see how they are going to do that. It's not the only quarterfinal fixture in the CAF Confederations Cup that is happening. There are actually other matches there. We got in Ghana from Zambia who will be playing CS Faxen, Etoel Dusayel versus El Hilal, and then Hassan. Vas Hassan Agdel versus Zamalek of Egypt. A big one there in the Confederations Cup. And now let's move ahead in the CAF Champions League where we have got also other big matches that will be happening there. And from East Africa, Simba Sports Club in Tanzania will be welcome Africa's big boys. Mazembe. And also, oh, Robert, just before you get to CAF Champions League, which I know Patrick Muleka is passionate about and he would like to comprehensively share uh, his views with regards to the same, mm. Kenyan players will be showcasing their prowess tomorrow because, as you've said, Ariankan FC playing yeah. who in S CAF S Confederations, S CAF yeah. CS Faxiana team yeah. that also faced Gourmet. And Kana is proud to be having players, two Kenyan players, yes. Duncan Otieno and the former Gourmet captain Musa Mohammed, and Mohammed. all of them mm -hmm. will be, you know, trying to uh, showcase their football uh, talent uh, I, at the continental level the same way Gore will be doing. So, big plus yeah. for Kenyan players ahead of the African Cup of Nations, and that will go a long way in shaping them. It, it will be a big miss for Jesse Were and uh, Anthony Akumu. But again, uh, it will be a big miss, but they should not be unhappy because remember, yeah. in that group, it was either Zesco or yes. Nkana. Nkana, and they did good for their brother. They yes. said, let's Nkana go through because if they they were to, to be beaten the last match and yes. then uh, with a bigger margin, then it will be like Nkana and Zesco out. But yes. they made sure that their big brother is there, you yes. know, that's Nkana. So at least we have uh, some two representative of Kenya there, though in Zesco also we had a Kenyan a uh, representative. Big, big representative uh, there. Uh, they actually been making So, Simba versus Tipi Mazembe. Mm, now that, you know, that one is a <laughs> one big clash that will be happening in Tanzania. Where's your money? My money, I think, again, uh, this time around, I'll go for Simba. You know, it's because uh, Simba has made uh, their home ground to be a fortress. Yes. And they've made sure that all the matches, they're, uh, they're won at home. Uh -huh. And I think that is the philosophy in, the, in African football. Make sure you win your home matches. Go away and look for a draw. And I think... TP Mazembe is a big, I mean, it's a big name in yes. African football. They've gone up to club championship, remember? They've done uh, club World Cup. They've done well. But in Dar es Salaam, look at what they've been doing. You go there, you get hammered. So I'm expecting Simba to do good at their home ground. But when they go to Kinshasa, things might be something else. Something. Yeah. There is a fan who is a PR officer for Simba Sports Club, Maxwell. What about him? The way he brings the crowd for Simba, the way he rallies the crowd for Simba, it's even better than our own former Prime Minister, Raheel Odinga, the, the white man from Simba. Is that I, think, I, think, I think Tanzanians are starting to get passionate about football. You remember uh, during the African Cup of Nations qualifier, do or die tie yeah. against Uganda cranes. They were supposed to win in order to qualify for African Cup of Nations in Egypt, which they did, demolishing their mm -hmm. opponents and neighbors by 3 nil. Pierre Liquid, a man who's been making headlines yes. of late, uh, was behind trying to push and advocate for the... Uh, crowd turning up yes. and filling the stadium in rafters mm -hmm. and it did work in their favor. So I would agree with Patrick Muleka that uh, playing Tanzanians away, you remember when they At played Al Ahli, yes. they were they got beaten I think 5 nil away, mm -hmm. but during the return leg they caused an upset, pulled a surprise which everyone didn't expect beating them. I think one nil and Medica Gero was on the score sheet. So against uh, TP Mazembe, it's a team that is recognized uh, globally. They have also played Super Cup yes. uh, meeting heavyweights like Barcelona, Real Madrid, and their financial muscles are another thing. They will scare you with that. But 
Simba, I will give them an edge playing at home. Maybe during return leg, it will be a reverse demolition outcome. <laughs> Patrick, <laughs> taking away from this conversation, yesterday I was reading the business daily and one of the fastest growing economies is the East African region with 7% going up. And Charles Onyango Obo was arguing that by 2040, East Africa will be a very big influence in Africa because of the way globalization is going. Do you think our clubs will be also be that good considering this wave that we have right now? Kenyans are behind Gorme. No matter what, we have to fill the stadium tomorrow. In Tanzania, it is the same thing. In Uganda, if they had a team like Viper or Express playing in the Champions League or in the Confederations Cup, 100% sure Nambole could be full. Do you think by 24th we'll be like, yeah, I don't care about the EPL now, it's all about me and my Shabana FC? Uh, it, 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 it might be. Unfortunately, in East Africa, we're still having a problem with uh, transmission. We still have that. Yes. It has to be sorted out because, again, we need to regionalize our transmission to ensure that we cater for the local audience. Yes. But going forward, I think uh, it has been shown for the uh, CAF, Cup, I mean, uh, African, uh, African, champ, uh, African Cup of Nations this year, yes. that East Africa is a force to reckon with. That uh, teams from Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi yes. are teams that are coming out to show the rest of the uh, Africa that we are here to make a name. And there is also the issue of a uh, fan wave that is coming yes. in. We found that in Kenya, I remember when Kogan was playing, uh, was it... Um, the last match they played, uh, we, Hussein, uh, day. Hussein Day, yes. and uh, now Hussein Day of, of, of Algeria. And we found that there are so many uh, supporters who are not actually for Gormaya. Yes. FC Leopards, others from Sofapaka, Karobang Sharks, were there to support Gormaya. Meaning that it's a time that you can put aside your club affiliation when we have a big match involving the Kenyan club or the regional club yeah. with another club from the other region. And I think that uh, the wave that has been there between North Africa and West Africa and part of Central Africa yes. is going to be broken by coming in of East Africa. East Africa. Yeah. And just some few comments coming in through Steve Ayo, yes. uh, football writer with 442 Media, and he's been on the show before. He's saying that uh, something related to what you guys are saying, Gurmaya boys just need to put their financial issues behind them yeah. once they step on that pitch. Because you know the controversy, we've had to secure the pitch in the first place. You remember Kasarani <laughs> Stadium yeah. was made to be used <laughs> by some like, expo uh, yeah. function until tomorrow, uh, until, you know, yeah, until Kenyans on Twitter demand, and yeah. social media platforms yeah. had to intervene and, the I mean, Kenyan. I'm Mohammed uh, said forces. that you know the expo has to end today ahead of tomorrow. So he says fans will be there. They got to perform for the fans and for themselves. Winning these games raise the profile of the club and the players too and means more money mm -hmm. to ask from the management. That's absolutely true because I know Kasarani Stadium tomorrow will be full. I've it's seen several people be. speaking, CS Amina Mohammed, yes. Ambassador. Kirimi Kaberia, all of them trying to rally fans mm -hmm. through their Twitter account to show up in large numbers and support Gormaya Football Club, respective of their club affiliation local. Even FC Leopards need to go to yeah. Kasarana and support yeah, they, they, Gormaya be there, because that's yeah, continental yeah. duty. It and is. it's like representing the country. Yeah, it is. After, after continental, we come back home and it's business as usual. But unfortunately, FC is already out of yeah. sports, Spencer Shield, and therefore they are not eligible to. <laughs> Qualify for CAF Confederations uh, next season. <laughs> I think much of that's good for, for diversity because, you know, in Kenya, I think we need to run away from the big boys versus the others. Yes. We need to do that. I think next season we expect another uh, another club, Bandari, Sofa Paka, or even Karyobang Sharks to be there for confederations. And I'll expect perhaps the champions, that's um, yeah. Gor Maya, mm -hmm. who are likely to retain their cup, to be in the quarterfinals of Champions League, Absolutely. not Confederation, yeah. and that's the way uh, the way we should be you, moving. You look at this analysis. Kanyobanga Sharks went to the CAF Confederations Cup in the preliminary stage where they were knocked out. Gormaya managed to go into the Champions League, dropped out to come to the group stages of the Confederations Cup. So you look at the quality there, and it tells you we are not ready to play in the Champions League, but we are ready and good enough to play in the Confederations Cup. Other matches in the Africa Champions League will be Mamelodi Sundowns versus Al Ahly. Then we have Horoya SC versus Waidar SC, and then Club Sportive versus EST Tunis. South Africa has also been doing good with Mamelodi and Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs, but this time round it will be the Sundowns in the Champions League.
Uh, Mamelodi Sundowns has been doing very well. Remember, for the last uh, like four, three to four seasons, they've been doing well, very well in the Champions League. Um, uh, uh, the other clubs we're talking of, um, Al Ahli has always been there. Yes. Al has been always been there doing what they do. But there is an inclusion of one club from Guinea called Horoya. You All know, right. Horoya is a club that was bought uh, by someone with money yes. three seasons ago. And they have been doing well. Remember last season they did well? Right now, they are in the knockout. They are meeting with Dari Casablanca. With Dari Casablanca is a big name. Remember, they've been champions, just like uh, Mamelo de Sundown. So we're expecting, for the first time I can say, that the knockout, I mean, uh, at this stage, yes. we, we are seeing good teams. Yeah. You cannot place your money. You know, it's, it, there's no pushovers here. Because uh, Horoya at home, unbeaten uh -huh. in Champions League. Yeah. Look at uh, uh, Simba at home unbeaten. Look at Mamelodi Sundowns. They know that if they are not going to get the result at um, uh, Cape Town, yeah. they will be beaten when they go away. Yeah. So we are having good matches this, uh, uh, this The weekend. dynamics of African, con uh, African football is home and away, even up to the semi-final stage. How tough does that make the knockout stages of the CAF Champions League and the Confederations Cup? It's quite tough because I think in the first place you just have to finish it off at home, especially when you are playing, you know, uh, when you are having a Herculean task like Gormaya does, you know, playing North African clubs is such uh, a big assignment because even as we speak, Gormaya has had a challenge winning at home. Their club, uh, their record performances during return leg fixtures has been, you know, quite awful. So finishing it off at home, Yes, I think is the most important thing because Gurma, as they seek playing RS Berkane tomorrow evening, they need to win and win spectacularly so yes. that when anything happens in the return leg, at least they have cemented their status during the first leg. So the dynamics have changed and the first leg matters most, especially when you're playing at home yes. and you're playing against a stubborn side. Just like your team United will be playing against Barcelona and unfortunately they're starting at home at Old Trafford contrary to how it was supposed to be if they have to pick <laughs> a point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Patrick. I appreciate you coming this guy here. Is, for this guy is <laughs> trying to be elusive. He's uh, not committing course, anything. He knows, he knows what will happen. United. He and it's happening happen. midweek, I think, oh, on oh, Wednesday. Oh, of course, it will be happening next week, and we'll be here for us to discuss next week. Because, you know, if you get hammered, you just get hammered. You know, in Champions League, just like the African Champions League, you get hammered at home, you know, your chances are over. But you Barcelona, Barcelona have overturned, have previously overturned huge well, first leg deficits. You are talking the, of Barcelona, this, this right? Segment, this segment was for <laughs> African football. <laughs> <laughs> this segment was not for European football. Let's enjoy March Day 32 of EPL goals. When we come back, we'll be talking about Tottenham's new stadium, or the Laguna start that is in shambles in Old Trafford and other matches that will be happening in La Liga and the Bundesliga.